Hey everybody, thanks for coming to Lindy from the Ground Up. I'm Laura. And I'm Brooks. And today we're gonna to be covering Charleston. And it looks like this. In this video, you'll be learning basic Charleston, a little history, how to integrate six count, and adding kicks to your six count. This builds on the basic six count rhythm and vocabulary. If you don't know those already, we have videos. Check them out, they're linked in the description below. Charleston is frequently thought of as the grandfather of Lindy Hop. It's a dance that you can do solo and partnered, and as is the case with six count, it's much easier to do this dance partnered if you already have it in your body. So consider getting into solo jazz. If you're interested, we have a lot of videos where you can just follow along. Charleston rose to popularity in the 1923 Broadway musical Runnin' Wild, which had, unusually at the time, an African-American cast. The most famous song, Charleston, was written by an African-American composer, James P. Johnson. You know the song. Dun, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum. But the dance's history is much older and more interesting. Charleston, South Carolina, a port city, was the capital of the slave trade, and nearly 40% of all enslaved Africans came through that port. By the mid-1800s, there were some 4 million enslaved Africans in the United States, and nearly 10% of them, or 400,000 people, lived in South Carolina. The Gullah Geechee people are descendants of the Africans who were enslaved on the rice, indigo, and sea island cotton plantations of the lower Atlantic coast. Many came from the rice growing region region of West Africa and Sierra Leone. The Gullah Geechee were generally outnumbered by slaves from other areas of Africa, but not in South Carolina and Georgia, and this concentration allowed them to share elements of language, custom, culture, cuisine, and dance. Here you can see a Gullah Geechee boy doing early Charleston in front of the Jenkins Orphanage Band, which has a crazy interesting history in and of itself, which we won't go into. To further connect the origin of Charleston to Africa, according to jazz dance, Charleston proved similar to a dance called the King Sailor in Trinidad and an Ebolo dance of the Igbo tribe in West Africa. And at this point, I just want to take a moment to say I'm so sorry for my pronunciation of everything. Now, of course, if you watch early footage, Charleston is most strongly associated with white flappers because, I mean, of course it was. Anyhow, back to the grandfather of Lindy Hop. You can really see the link between Lindy Hop and Charleston in the 1929 clip after Sieben. After seven, I'm not sure. Anyhow, the third couple, Shorty Stump and Liza Underdunk, just kidding, their real names are Shorty George Snowden and Maddie Purnell, are doing this thing called the breakaway, which is the link between front to front Charleston and the swing out we know and love today. Note about that clip, the announcer, James Barton, is in blackface. When you talk about Lindy Hop history, you're gonna run into some racism. Other note about that clip, the music is provided by the Savoy house band Chick Webb and his orchestra. Now surprisingly, there is very little vintage video evidence of side-by-side -side Charleston, though of course we can't know what the original dancers did when they were social dancing away from the cameras. However, side-by-side -side Charleston is very common today, so we're starting with that. Let's build up the basic together, follow along.
Now a few details, but first a caveat, there are many different ways to dance. We're gonna show you what works best for us and what we feel is most commonly represented in the vintage clips that we admire. To us in Charleston, you wanna bounce on every beat such that your foot isn't stuck to the floor. And I think about bouncing high enough where my foot actually makes a sound. This helps keep the rhythm in my body and allows me to flow across the floor more fluidly. If bouncing hurts your knees or your hips or your feet, please modify it so it feels good for you. Remember, there's not one right way to dance, so find out what's best for you. Now let's try it with a partner. Put your outside foot forward, bounce the music, and here we go. We're gonna start with a rock step. Notice that sometimes Brooks and I are rock stepping and sometimes we kick backwards. They're both right. moves you already know to make a more complete dance. We're gonna start by just sandwiching in the basics, six count and Charleston. Try it on your own first. We're gonna do two six count basics and then two Charleston basics and then two six count basics and then two Charleston basics, etc. Six count and Charleston. Six count and Charleston. Ready, six count. Charleston. Six count. Charleston. Six count. Now let's start with a partner. First, we'll start off alternating the six count rhythm with Charleston, and we're gonna do two of each. As we start to feel more comfortable, leaders, I want you to choose when to switch. Remember, the goal is to be clear, not tricky. Follow or see if you can notice your leader's bounce and movement, and notice those same differences you felt solo dancing coming from your leader. Now, of course, there are a lot of similarities, but notice how different they feel. Notice how different the bounce is. Notice how different the flow is. While dancing, if one person kick steps and the other one triple steps, don't worry, that's part of the dance. Since they take up the same amount of time and end on the same foot, you'll end up in the same place as well. Now as you feel comfortable, loop in some of the other moves you know. Start with the six count basic and then move on from there. An obvious way to get into Charleston is from that six count circle. An obvious way to get out of Charleston is a tuck turn.
Now let's start with a partner. Place triple steps with kick steps. I like to do this in moves like the circle, the tuck turn, and the side pass. Let's do the six count footwork together with this variation. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. I wonder who he can be. Somebody loves me. I wish I knew who he can be worries me. For every guy who passes by, I shout, hey, mate. Now let's try that same rhythm with your partner, starting with the tuck turn. Let's begin with the Charleston basic and then go into that tuck turn. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. Maybe it's you. feel comfortable with that, try it with other moves. Remember, leaders and followers don't have to do this at the same time, and we won't necessarily even have the same preferences. For example, Brooks and I both do this rhythm on the tuck turn frequently, but I almost never do it on the last half of the six count pass. One person can triple step, the other person can kick step. Since the move takes six counts, you'll both end up in the same place. Dance it out and see what feels right to you. Quick tips for leaders and followers. In my experience, I found it's much easier if you kick along the line you're traveling. This helps keep your momentum focused and balanced, and it helps prevent you from kicking your partner. Now let's put it all together. I recommend starting with some of the six count material, and then once you feel comfortable, go into Charleston. All right, you got it. Now you just need to practice it again and again and again. And don't forget, the dance is more than just moves. That's right, it's history, it's culture, and 
It's a dance, and moves are just vocabulary. If you need some music to practice to, we've got a playlist that we've created for you. It's linked down in the description. Also, if you like the music in this video, it's Brooks's band, and you can find a link to that in the description as well. If you want to support Lindy Hop history and culture, we, we do, do too. too. A portion of the proceeds from this video will go to causes that support them. And of course, this video is not a substitute for social dancing. The best way to learn how to dance is to go out and dance.